Hello there, welcome, and thanks for clicking on my first YouTube video. My name's Matt, and I guess if I have a mission statement, it's that the world needs weird, and I'm going to do my best to contribute. One arts and crafts project at a time. While I may have missed the Halloween window, it's my firm belief, and lived experience, that spooky season never truly ends. With that in mind, let's make something creepy out of sticks. Having lots of green spaces nearby does make it easier to gather raw materials. Here I am on an evening stroll. The weather's been blustery, so that makes for plenty of fallen branches that haven't been on the ground long enough to rot. That's a nice leaf on the ground there. Probably doesn't portend anything grim. Now, having got those home into some nice dry cardboard, they've sprung up a treat, and I've got plenty to work with. I've broken these all down to manageable lengths, and now I'll pick through them, seeing what sticks out. Most of these on the left are thicker than I need for now, so I'll save them for later. There are some interesting shapes here. Who knows what future projects they might inspire. If you see a shape that suggests something to you, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to see what the internet brain comes up with. This stick in particular has caught my eye, since I said I wanted to make something creepy, and this has a nice crawling along and rearing up vibe. I do also like how these few branches gather to make a mini tree. That could be fun for another time. I did weigh up the crawling rearing stick against some others, but they just didn't have that star quality. Maybe in their next life, who knows. But back to the creeping crawler. Now I know the rough scale of this abomination to be, I can start picking through these twigs for some legs. Twig legs. Twegs. Where was I? Where am I? Oh yeah, twigs. So, once I've sorted them for about the right thickness, I'm now looking for sections of particular shape so that the legs seem somewhat jointed once they're on the body and supporting it. Once I'd gathered what felt like enough legs for our new friend, somewhere in the neighbourhood of 60, I honestly stopped counting, I sorted them into roughly matched pairs so that there'd be some lateral symmetry, if not uniformity, along the length of the body. I started attaching the legs to the main trunk, this was a long process of adding generous beads of hot glue, positioning the legs, holding them until the glue cooled, and then adding more hot glue before proceeding to the next pair. Having gotten at this somewhat haphazardly, I can now see that the legs are giving Twiggly's body a much lower posture than I'd like. So I made some adjustments to their position, using a butane lighter to soften the glue, repositioned the legs, then added more glue for reinforcement. And yes, I'm calling him Twiggly. Now all the legs are in place, on to the next step. Which I forgot to film. Either that, or I found that I had the energy to work, my camera battery was still charging, so I carried on, off camera, unsure if I'd still have the energy if I'd waited. We're all just doing our best out here. The struggle is real, look after yourselves. So to give you some idea of what I got up to, here I am picking out scraps of bark for Twiggly's underside. This bark is thin enough to be trimmed with nail scissors, so I'm making these ones hug the body and legs a bit closer, since this is where there'd be more moving parts. Of course these limbs don't move, and Twiggly's underside will seldom be seen, but this is also for your benefit, and on top of that, I'll know. A lot of this bark is quite thin and papery, and it just flaked off from some thicker branches that I've gathered. Look to a future video to see what happens to them. Next, I wanted to give Twiggly some back legs, so I picked out a longer, meaner looking pair. Before I googled myriapod anatomy, I was just calling them butt limbs, and I guess I wasn't that far off. These back legs kind of freaked me out, and they are stinking rad. I test fitted them in a gap between these plates, then glued the glue. It was actually not exciting, there was more holding things still while glue cooled. Finally, I give him a checking over, and use my nail scissors to finely trim the edges of his exoskeleton into shape. Next, I filled in the gaps between Twiggly's top and bottom scales, and legs, using some gap filler. I mixed in some acrylic paint and some PVA glue, then a little more water than is recommended for its intended purpose, and then I could sort of roughly grout this creature, using one of my many spare twigs as a fine point spatula. This bit's very poorly lit. Can we do something about that? 
Next up I mix an oil wash using various shades of brown oil paint and white spirit. This was my first time doing this, as will be evidenced by my difficulty getting more paint from the tube to stick to my little palette there. Enjoy this simulation of... a shitty stick. You're welcome. Before applying the oil wash to Twiggly, I tested it out on the stick that I'd used to mix the gap filler, so I could see how the colour would shift. I then strengthened the oil wash a bit, and once I was happy with the shade, I proceeded to soak the arthropod. I applied the oil wash pretty heavily to Twiggly's body and legs, getting the brush saturated and only squeezing out a little before dabbing the wash all over. On top of darkening the gap filler, I also want this oil wash to somewhat unify the different parts of the sculpture. Since they're made out of materials that didn't grow together, at least this way I can make it look like they share a common goo. Now here's where I thought I'd press record before I started making a bass, but actually it was when I thought I'd pressed pause. To fill you in on this bass, I took a piece of scrap MDF, sealed it with a layer of PVA, shaped a couple of balls of aluminium foil into some rough topography to support Twiggly's posture, and then went all over it with more painty, gluey gap filler. Adding in some small rocks and bits of bark as I did so, really trying to use the filler as sticky mud to hold most of this down. Then I carried on adding layers of acrylic paint and PVA mud, mixed up to about the consistency of single cream, both to stick down the detritus on the board, and to fill in some of the small gaps. Again with the lighting, who do I have to kill? <sighs> right then. From that point on, it's a matter of varying the colours, going back and forth, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, a bit warmer, a bit cooler, both covering up and then trying to be haphazard adding in little bits of gravel and clotted earth in the sections where the paint glue has pooled and is still wet for now. Then blending the edges, adding more black and a little bit more white to the palette to darken it and desaturate it, letting it mix in the tray and on the brush and on the piece. Really, for Twiggly to stand out, the muddier and less distinct the base looks, the better. I just... whatever, here's more bark garnish. Once my mud has dried and stuck down my forest floor salad like a super calorific McDonald's ranch dressing, I add another oil wash, even darker than before, to the base. Like with Twiggly, I want this to act as a sort of broad glaze over the whole area to unify the varied colours and tones, and to settle in the gaps and give the whole thing a little more contrast. To add a final layer of grit, and to make the ground a little dustier, and dull down any gloss from all the acrylic on this thing, I took some earth tone soft pastels, some browns, dark green, light orange for variety, and crushed them down into this pigment powder. Highly recommend a chunk of slate in a little box for this job, works a treat. Don't breathe it in, I was wearing a dust mask while filming this, as far as you know. To finish the job, I spritzed down the areas where the dust and rubble seemed loose with some isopropyl alcohol, which broke the surface tension enough to help me soak in some watered down matte Mod Podge, with just a couple of drops of dish soap in the mix. And that's it! We got to the end! All in all, I think I've learned a lot from this experience. The crafting process and the whole business of filming, editing, and figuring out how to narrate this thing. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for your time and attention. I'm undeterred by the challenges, and I look forward to making more of these videos. To bring a little more weird into all your lives. If you'd like to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, so that you'll know when I've managed to organise myself enough to upload a video. Peace and love to you all. Bye-bye now.